Hey guys, today I'm going to make the argument that PewDiePie is more of a magic player than some of your favorite content creators. Uh, first of all, he is a mythic in MTG Arena. And we all know in MTG Arena, you can't cheat at magic and you don't get buys. One of the crazy things I think about in Magic Pros is the same people win all the time. And given the very high variance of Magic the Gathering, which means that yes, eventually you will run into some bad luck. It seems that the majority of Magic Pros don't have the same variance that you or I have, and that may be because they're stacking their decks and cheating. So MTG Arena solves that problem. Now, PewDiePie obviously likes Magic, and even though there has been lots of negative feedback, mostly from Reddit and Twitter, he is still playing it. Uh, a lot of you have mentioned that he was only going to play one video and it was so, I don't know, beat T-series or some random reason he was playing the video. But the way he talks about Magic and the way he plays Magic, he is a Magic player and I think he's been one for a very long time according to himself and why would he lie? He's bigger than Magic the Gathering, to be honest. I'm going to tell you a story um, a long time ago that many of you have not really heard of because it happened so long ago. Uh, there was a Community Cup event, uh, which we no longer have because of, quote, funding. And the Community Cup would be, let's vote some content creators, and they would face the research and development of pretty much customer service of Magic the Gathering. And we... Mana Source for two years, campaigned and campaigned and campaigned, and finally he won. So he was invited to the Community Cup. They paid for his airfare. At that time, he may or may not have been suffering from IBS. Who really knows? And we had to go back to the tweets to look at that. But he was able to participate in this event. His opposition, the people who he was playing with, actually do not want to win because at the Community Cup, if the community wins against the, quote, company, the evil company, then all the community members on Magic Online receive free promo cards and packs and all this good stuff. So the event is not designed for the community to lose. Let me put it that way. The people on the other side are probably told by Wizard of the Coast you have to lose to these, quote, community leaders to make them feel good. So it's not just Wedge, but all the other community leaders have very good records. For the most part, go lit almost undefeated. Wedge, in 10, 12 games, does not win a single game of Magic. Let me repeat this again. Wedge, who for two years campaigned to code to this event, could not beat the customer service employees who are told to lose. And he couldn't win one game. And the only points he received was for flavor. <laughs> Junior cheeseburger flavor. Does that sound like someone who plays Magic? Does this sound like someone who makes deck techs on the top decks and, you know, on this, has a good understanding of Magic? Or does this sound like someone who buys Magic cards from Walmart and doesn't have an F in them and doesn't have anyone to play with Magic with? So this is our community leader who we voted into represent us, the community, to hopefully win some fake online magic online packs for us and promos and such. And he couldn't beat customer service reps who were told specifically to lose so the players would feel good and the whole community would feel good that now they have rewards because they lose every single year. He couldn't... It's not bad enough he couldn't win. He couldn't even win one game like by random pewdiepie on the other hand is a very good magic player yes he does miss some triggers but that's probably to accelerate the gameplay magic arena is the ultimate equalizer because when you talk about esports um and i'll talk about the professor now so watch league of legends uh they they're actually season, is it the spring season is right now? Or watch the championships, the global championships, or watch Overwatch League, or 
Fortnite or any of these e-sports, Counter-Strike. And then tell me how many of those people look like a 45, 50-year-old professor with a master's in English who doesn't actually want to be a professor. Do any of the people look like Tolarian? And when you go to your f and or you go to a pre- midnight pre-release, or you go to a game day, or whatever event that you physically go play Magic at, or you log on to MTG Arena, do you think that the average, the person that is behind the screen is a 50-year-old male who <laughs> does who does reviews on binders, the quality of binders? No. This is a anonymy. Um, this is something that shouldn't happen in most communities or an esport. If we are an esport community, and that's what we're going to become, you, you know, when you talk about League of Legends, you have uh, Sojak, very attractive female. You have uh, Jat, and you have Mark Z, and it, these are people who are 25, double lift. League of Legends pro who's been there from the very beginning. He's only 25. He's the most famous League of Legends player in North America. And he's been playing. He's one of the oldest players as well. So that means it's going to be a bunch of young people. Hmm. What subscriber base has a bunch of young people? What subscriber, what YouTuber has a bunch of young people who really like eSports? Oh, I think that's PewDiePie. If I'm correct, that's PewDiePie. You got it. And when you look at Tolarian and you look at Weds, uh, their YouTube channel, is, I don't know what they do on Twitch. I don't watch them on Twitch. They don't have any MTG Arena. It is in my belief that they don't know how to play the game. Um, I can point to many other examples of this in our community where um, MTG Mafer, who played 33 hours, gets a mythic invitation to win a million dollars over Caleb, who is, you know, streams it every single day, or Jeff Hoogland, who streams it every single day. And you ask, why would that happen? You know, why does Jeff Hoogland not get invited, although he is a popular streamer? His numbers are far surpassing these other mythic invitational invites. And the reason is politics. So I love the fact that PewDiePie, Hasbro is a publicly traded company. That means if you buy stock that has voting power, you can buy stock without voting power, but assuming you buy stock with voting power, the sole purpose of this corporation is to make its shareholders money. That's it. There's no other goals. And if the shareholders are not making money, they can force chains. And that's what PewDiePie represents. He's an actual real magic player. I'm an old school magic player. I can clearly recognize other old school magic players from the way they discuss the game, the way they play the game, and the way they reference the game. When I view the mana source and he's going over a deck tech that's exactly the same as the GP deck tech and he's saying, oh, you can do this and you can do that. The guy can't win one game against scrubs from Wizards of the Coast who are told to lose. Is this a magic player? Or what is this? Like, are, are you are you serious? Are, they're told to lose because if they won, then the community would be really upset. They didn't get their, quote, free rewards, right? And he couldn't even win one game. He had to win a flavor game because they felt so bad. And that's who we chose to represent us and try to win these quote, awards. Someone who is so bad at magic, he can't even beat like the janitor at Wizard of the Coast who is, was told specifically to lose. All right. The janitor is like, please beat me. Please beat me, the Manosaurus. Please beat me. I'm going to lose my job if I win. And Manosaurus is, nah, I'm good. All right. So let me uh, do some, uh, you know, let me, let me tap over my man. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to play anything. I mean, come on now. It, it does. It's not only an embarrassment to our community. It also shows you the difference between PewDiePie and then all these fake. Ga- I don't want to say they're fake gamers, but at this point, they are fake gamers. And I can point to so many different examples of people I don't think play Magic. Um, I don't think they have Magic cards. 
uh, MTG Finance, my biggest pet peeve. And this is why I like Alpha Investment. He says some pretty crazy stuff, but he shows his product. So, yeah, he does own what he's saying he owns, as opposed to everyone else in MTG Finance when they post on Reddit. I bought one million moats, and I'm rich. Da, da, da. Follow me on my Facebook to learn more about all my and then he's on like, you know, a very crappy phone with a uh, crappy microphone with the cabinets look like they're from the 1960s and a home that looks like it's decaying as I see it. Or he's in a picnic table outside in a public area. It's like, wait, you don't have like a nice backyard or you, know, you don't live in my you know, golf course. Um, I'm not saying that to play magic you have to have lots of money what i'm saying is if you say that you have lots of money in magic cards it doesn't make sense that you're in a potato camera with a cheap microphone i mean it doesn't add up like and plus the fact is all these fakers in mtg finance which i can call them i can make a list of 40 of them by name right now um and they will say i bought this buy this buy this paywall pay me to tell you what to buy and they don't they themselves don't own any of the cards right i mean if you're so egotistical wouldn't you just pick like take a picture of the cards that you had and then prove that you own them instead of just talk 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 and anyway some of the interesting parts about pewdiepie are coming from these fake magic content creators and it's so obvious that they're just jealous, and some of them actually, uh, the mana source is trying to suck up to PewDiePie, um, even as we speak right now, which <laughs> makes sense, right? Because it's his personality type. When you talk about um, PewDiePie, and from one old Magic player to another old Magic player, um, he's a real deal. He is absolutely the real deal. He plays Magic, he enjoys Magic, and there was a culture when I grew up, in same probably similar age, where you do troll each other and you do say some things that are mean that you wouldn't want to like say publicly, of course. And that was the culture. Like now, it's like, hey, we're just bros, we're hanging out, and I said something that was not PR or what was it? PR is that correct? Um, what what's that term called? I was watching that South Park episode. It's like. It's like safety something. Anyway, like, if I said something offensive, then people get just go mad, right? The whole memes, the uh, Magic for Bad with Travis Wu and friends, um, it was a Facebook group. They were just being bros. They said something. They posted something inappropriate. Some people liked the comment, and then they had to ban everyone, including people who may not even have saw the post, uh, <laughs> like Travis. And... It's kind of like, when did Magic become that? Because when I was playing Magic, it was just bros hanging out. And I know what you guys are going to say. Well, according to statistics from Mero and Magic the Gathering, 40% of Magic players are female. And we have to tread carefully and not offend anyone. Uh, because, you know, the, you know, it can't be a boys club anymore. And we just have to deal with all these females in our game. And my response to that is, look, magic has changed a lot, but your core demographic of white males, I'm not even a white male, I'm just saying that this is probably a core demographic, has not changed. PewDiePie is actually a core demographic, and his subscribers definitely are core demographics. And when you talk about what you need to build an esports team or an esports league, uh, just go look at, go on YouTube, go on Twitch and watch some, you know, people stream other esports, Counter Strike, and take a look at the people and see, hmm, are they 50 years old professors or are they like 25 year old double lifts? And double lift is actually considered pretty old for the game of League of Legends. And he's only 25. And go to your FNM, go to your pre releases, especially the midnight one where you see the most avid fans, right, who are willing to play during midnight. Go to your GP, take some pictures of some butt cracks, right? Like, okay, so the whole butt crack thing I found pretty hilarious. And they had to ban the guy. You know, the guy went to GPs and he took um, pictures of him, you know, with butt cracks. And that's like a PewDiePie type of deal, right? 
and it goes viral, and then Magic gets very embarrassed, and they have to ban him. Now, yes, I understand the privacy concern. I understand that that's not a great view for a game. But at the same time, it was kind of funny, and it was definitely like a meme. And when did that? When did we become so offended that we couldn't just laugh at it? Because it's not like he made it up, right? It's not like if you go to any GP, you're not going to see a bunch of butt cracks. This is just natural. It's not like he uh, paid people to beat him up or anything, right? To try to get a bigger contract, Empire dude. Anyway, um, it was a real event. He went. He paid. He went to the real event. He had someone take pictures of him with butt cracks, and it just so happened that there was a lot of butt cracks at GP Richmond, which is true for any GP. So when did it become like so bad that we had to ban someone for that? When did it become so bad that we had to ban someone like on Steve Media, who, although not the best uh, representative of our game, of course, it was just funny. He was just memeing some Pepe frogs and, you know, like, Great, he memed a few Pepe frogs, and now he's banned for life. Um, the whole Travis Wu thing really offends me, uh, mainly because they actually took something away from him. He was um, going to the Pro Tour, he had his tickets and everything, and they just took that away. That's his livelihood. And I feel like that's really bad. And PewDiePie is going to change everything. This whole game is going to change, um, because it has to. There's no outs for Magic the Gathering. Um, PewDiePie, if they want to be in esports, well, like Fortnite or uh, League of Legends or Overwatch, PewDiePie can get you there from just himself. Tolarian Community College cannot. The Manosaurus cannot. I mean, I would, I'll put it out this way. If the Manosaurus wants to go to uh, any GP that I will go to, I'll play him one and one, and the winner has the winner. Well, I guess we'll do a best out free match. Well, he can pick standard, modern, legacy, whatever he wants. And the loser has to quit Magic altogether. I would go out and say this right now. I don't think he plays Magic. I don't think he's very good at Magic. And I remember it being really embarrassed for voting, him, for voting for him at the community event. It literally is janitors told by the company, we're going to fire you unless you throw to these uh quote community reps so they can tweet about how awesome the event was and oh we won all these prizes for the community and, and feel good about themselves and that didn't happen you know um that didn't happen <laughs> so uh if the man source wants to do that for me i would be more than happy to play him in a best out free any format he wants uh not draft there's too much there's a little too much variance in my taste for draft but standard modern legacy Frontier, if he's into that, Tiny Leaders, Commander, if he wants to do one-on-one -on -one French Commander, yeah, I got a Commander deck, it's pretty OP, um, it's not friendly, I have actually multiple Commander decks because I, I'm not allowed to play some of them in group play, so uh, back to my main question, is PewDiePie a real Magic player? Yes, he is far more real, I can imagine seeing PewDiePie at FNM much more than I can see Tolarian Community College or um, MTG Mayfer or any of these other, quote, uh, celebrities in Magic because I don't, I've never seen any of them. Like, you know, I maybe it's, you know, I've lived all over New York City, Philadelphia, uh, Williamsburg, Washington, D.C., Houston, San Francisco, and I've gone to a ton of different Magic events and I'm just not seeing a bunch of, uh, professors playing magic i just don't see it and public maybe they play privately on their yachts and things of that nature and scholarly while reading scholarly books but i've never seen it now you might be like oh well that's why he's so popular he's so unique and stuff but he's not as interesting if i was a company and i had to invest in one of these individuals pewdiepie or tolerant community college to sponsor my content and numbers were the same I'm not saying that one is 400 times bigger than the other one. I'm just saying, or 200 times bigger than the other one. I'm just saying all numbers being equal, PewDiePie. So anyway, uh, please subscribe to my other channel so I can get some revenge in real life. Um, I am salvating, that means drooling. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I defined that. But 
I'm salivating at the opportunity to go speak at one of their bigger events and then basically rip them to shreds. But first, I need my YouTube channel, hopefully to get like over 10,000 maybe. Don't worry, I'll gift you out, right? The foil Liliana is nothing compared to what I can give if you get me over 10,000 on this channel. Bye, guys.